So back in 2004, two very important events took place. First, I was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed freshman in high school who was still holding on to the hope that high school couldn't possibly be any worse than middle school. <laughs> I'm sorry. If only I had known. But also in 2004, UPN, which we now know as the CW, came out with a brand new teen mystery dramedy called Veronica Mars. This is one of those shows that I had heard about at the time and I was like the perfect age for, but just never watched it, you know, because the main character was a girl. Now, Veronica Mars only ran for three seasons and was canceled in 2007. There was a Kickstarter movie in 2014, and just last week, 15 years after the show first debuted, a fourth season revival was released on Hulu. And I figured this would be a perfect time to take a look back and see why everyone still loves this show so much. But before that, really quick, this video is sponsored by Audible. If you don't know what Audible is by now, Audible is an online service that lets you download audiobooks, audio newspapers, and just like all kinds of spoken word entertainment. Right now, if you sign up with my link, audible.com slash Alex Myers, or text my name, Alex Myers, to 500-500, you can get a 30-day free trial where you get one free audiobook and two Audible original programs. Now, Audible originals are exactly what they sound like. Audiobooks are some kind of like audio entertainment thing that you can't find anywhere else. Or exclusive versions of books like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer read by Nick Offerman, for example. And once you've signed up, you continue to get one free audiobook regardless of price and two more Audible originals every month for just 15 bucks. And right now, until July 31st, if you're an Amazon Prime member and you sign up using my link, you get 66% off your first three months. So basically, it's like you're getting three months for the price of one. And here's the thing, whatever audiobooks you download, even the free one you get with the 30-day free trial, you get to keep forever, even if you cancel the membership. So, like, you literally have nothing to lose. As always, I would recommend The Power of Habit because almost everything we do, from sleeping to eating to studying to making YouTube videos, everything comes down to our habits. And by understanding and changing those habits, really, you can do almost anything. So once again, sign up with my link, audible.com slash Alex Myers, or text my name, Alex Myers, to 500-500, start your 30-day free trial, get your free audio, you, but I mean, come on. Okay, back to the show. So right in the beginning, we meet our main character, Veronica Mars. Just your average teenage girl trying to survive high school and solve mysteries and stuff. This is my school. If you go here, your parents are either millionaires or your parents work for millionaires. If you're in the second group, you get a job. Fast food, movie theaters, or you could be me. My after-school job means tailing philandering spouses or investigating false injury claims. Now, I know I say this all the time when I go back and watch older shows, but this time I really mean it. How does Kristen Bell look exactly the same 15 years later? I mean, if this isn't proof that we've been taken over by alien robots from out of space, I don't know what is, okay? So later in English class, we get a glimpse of what kind of student Veronica Mars is. Veronica Mars. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, you're my volunteer. Pope. An essay on man, epistle one. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Man never is, but always to be blessed. The soul uneasy and confined from home. You know what I think is interesting about this scene right here? So Veronica answers the question even though she wasn't paying attention or whatever. And you can see everyone rolling their eyes like, Psh, look at this girl knowing stuff. <laughs> what a loser. But then just a few years later, we get a very similar scene in The Vampire Diaries. Pearl Harbor? Um, December 7th, 1941. John F. Kennedy assassination. 1963. Korean War. 1950 to 1953. Ha! It ended in 52. It was 1953. <laughs> so I'm just a little lost here, okay? Like, is being smart cool or not? Because, like, how am I supposed to know what to think if all these TV shows just keep changing all the rules? Now, one of the first things we learn about Veronica is that she actually used to be one of the cool kids back when she was dating this guy, Duncan Kane. I used to sit there at that table. The only reason I was allowed past the velvet ropes was Duncan Kane, son of software billionaire Jake Kane. He used to be my boyfriend. Then one day, with no warning, he ended things. And that's when I decided that if I can't have love, no one can. So from that day on, I've been swiping right on every guy who has a picture of himself holding a fish. Which is way more common than it should be, but that's a different conversation. Then we go on a date where I pretend to think it's so funny how he still quotes lines from Borat. And then I never text him ever again. That's why they call me the Ghost of Her. But actually, turns out Duncan and Veronica's relationship has a lot more going on than just your typical, like, high school thing. You see, some time ago, Duncan's sister, who was also Veronica's best friend, was mysteriously murdered. And Veronica's dad was the sheriff at the time 
time. Now, he was convinced that the girl's dad had done it, aka the most powerful guy in the whole city, but then someone else confessed, and long story short, Veronica's dad lost his job. And of course, thanks to technology, word traveled pretty fast. It's the Lily Kane video. How do you think that family feels? Six weeks after Lily Kane's death, someone from the sheriff's department leaked the crime scene video. Within 24 hours, it was all over the net. Streaming video made it possible. Streaming video in 2004? <laughs> I wish! Let me tell you, if you wanted to watch anything back then, you had to download it from like Kazaa or whatever all night and then just hope it was what you wanted. But like 9 times out of 10, you know, it was just like that Star Wars kid video. <laughs> I mean, 2004 was a heck of a time. Anyway, so after being fired from his job, now Veronica Mars' dad works as a private detective. And her mom left because of the social stigma and all that. Duncan broke up with Veronica because her dad blamed his dad for the murder. And Veronica's just kind of stuck in the middle. Now one day, Duncan's mom comes in to talk talk to Veronica's dad about something. Don't get the wrong idea, Mr. Mars. I don't like you. I hate the fact that I'm here, but I do know if anyone will be dogged and resourceful in this matter, it'll be you. Don't call me at home. I'll call you. And I'll need it right away. After this, we learn that she thinks her husband might be doing some hamana hamana ha and she wants someone to check it out. Now later on that night, Veronica's dad gets a phone call about a different case and has to fly down to Texas for a few days. Now as you might imagine, Veronica's not really one to just sit around doing nothing at 1 o'clock in the morning, so she hops in the car and goes to find out what's going on with Duncan's dad. She follows him to some shady, like, rinky-dink little motel. You know, the ones you see on the side of the road where the sign just says, like, We have beds. Maybe. But if my dad wasn't right about Jake Kane then, it looks like Mrs. Kane is right about him now. Not a lot of high-powered business meetings taking place at the Camelot at one in the morning. Anyway, Veronica can't really get a good look at who Duncan Kane's dad's talking to, so she just takes some pictures of the area and gathers up some clues and, I mean, you know, just typical school night stuff. Now, a couple days later, Veronica's dad comes home and unleashes all his dadness at once. And? Who's your daddy? Ugh, I hate it when you say that. You know what? This is important. You remember this. I used to be cool. When? 77. You know, when I was growing up, my parents always told me about how they used to be cool back before they had, like, kids or whatever. And I was so worried I was gonna end up like that. But turns out I had nothing to worry about, cause I was never cool. So, you know, crisis averted. Anyway, Veronica tells her dad about what she's found out so far about Duncan Keynes' dad and the whole creepy motel thing and all that. And suddenly, her dad does, like, a total 180, just out of nowhere. The woman in question never stepped foot outside, but I did get pictures of license plates. I figured you could run them. You stay away from Jake King. I don't want you doing anything else on this case. But you think that's gonna stop Veronica? Ha! I mean, come on, does this haircut say I'm a quitter to you? So she pretends to be the very European police station receptionist and runs the license plates anyway. Listen, we had a hit and a gun last night. Victim got the plates, but we need someone to run them. No problem, hit me. Uh, Arizona, four, Victor, Golf, zero, zero, zero. That car is registered to one. Leanne Mars. Veronica Mars' mom? That night, Veronica sneaks back to her dad's office and goes through his files. Now here, she discovers that he's still investigating Duncan's sister's murder after all this time. But that's when she finds something even more mysterious. The Lily Kane murder file. Some of these notes are less than a month old. My surveillance photo from the Camelot, why is it in the Lily Kane file? What was mom doing there and what business did she have with Jake Kane? So what was her mom doing with Duncan's dad down at La Hotel de Herpes? What's their connection to the murder? Why is her dad keeping all these secrets from her? And most importantly, what's going on with these pants, Veronica? Now at the very end, we close out the episode with a little monologue where we learn one last bit of crucial information about Veronica Mars. I used to think I knew what tore our family apart. Now I'm sure I don't, but I promise this. I will find out what really happened and I will bring this family back together again. I'm sorry, is that mushy? Well, you know what they say. Veronica Mars, she's a marshmallow. I don't know what that means. But yeah, let me tell you, if you thought this was just another early to mid 2000s cheesy teen drama about high school kids doing nothing for like 10 seasons, like every other show back then, you'd be mistaken. And as someone who's watched a lot of teen dramas, both old and new, I gotta say, Veronica Mars has aged surprisingly well. Like this scene, where she gets hit on by some local tough guys. The only time I care what a woman has to say is, when she's riding my big old hog. So it's big, huh? Legendary. Well, let's see it. I mean, if it's as big as you say, I'll be your girlfriend. 
We could go to prom together. Don't let Blondie talk to you like that. Sounds like your buddy here wants to see it too. You know, nowadays this is pretty common, I guess, but back then you didn't have a lot of teen drama lead characters with this kind of personality. Or sometimes any personality. But anyway, like I said, the new fourth season is up on Hulu right now. So whether you're an old fan or a newcomer like myself, it might be time to give Veronica Mars a watch. You know, in watching Veronica Mars for the first time now, like, I can see how influential it was, whether, like, consciously or not. I mean, because, like, you know, back in the early to mid-2000s, there really weren't many characters like this at all. In fact, a lot of characters were just kind of boring, to be honest. But, I mean, like, sure, you had the mom from Gilmore Girls or, like, Buffy, I guess, a couple years earlier, but that's really it. But then you fast-forward to today, and it kind of seems like every show is trying to be Veronica Mars, in a way. Like, not just solving mysteries, but, like, the whole... Like, for example, right, if you think about it, like, Betty Cooper in Riverdale is basically just the dollar store version of Veronica Mars, you know what I mean? Like, a dark past and solving mysteries with a no-nonsense attitude. Like, it's, I mean, it's it's kind of obvious if you think about it. I guess it makes sense though, right? Because if you have a lot of people who watched Veronica Mars back when they were like teenagers or like early 20s or whatever, and then, you know, fast forward 10 or 15 years, and now they're writing shows, and so they're writing about what they like and what they know, which leads to every character now being Veronica Mars. Now, I mean, that's kind of an exaggeration. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just interesting to me to go back and watch like the older shows, you know, and be like, ah, oh, okay, I get it now. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what's your favorite part of the video or just say hi. Follow my dog Charlie on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.